Hello everyone, Macy Lou here, and in today's video, I have a very special one for you. Um, it's something that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time, but wasn't exactly sure the structure of the video. But now I finally have a sort of a structure to go off of. So these are going to be seven tips to help you have more self-confidence in your artwork. So this video is mostly for people who have already started putting their art out there on social media. So if you're someone who has not done that yet, you can still watch this video and probably get a lot out of it. But I'm kind of doing this from a perspective of someone who's already on social media, who's already utilizing it, who's already putting their art out there for people to see. If you guys want to see a video specifically geared toward you and you haven't even started putting your stuff on social media yet, I highly recommend you comment down below and let me know because I would be happy to do a separate video on that topic. So number one, I think that a great thing for you guys to do is to try a lot of different things. Um, a lot of us don't even realize, you know, all of the capabilities and possibilities with art. Um, there are so many things that I didn't try and that I refused to try and that I was too stubborn to try back when I was a teenager or back when I was maybe early 20s or whatever. And I was just stuck in my old ways. I only wanted to do certain types of art. And I didn't want to try other mediums. I didn't want to get out of my comfort zone. I didn't want to try to draw things I didn't normally draw. So my first tip to getting self-confident in your art is to try a lot of different things because here's the great thing. When you're in your sketchbook, it doesn't matter what you make. I mean, you don't have to show that sketchbook to freaking anybody. So put things in there that, you know, you want to create and that really interests you, even if it's something you're kind of afraid to draw. So I'm not saying you have to like paint and draw things because that's the cool what the cool kids are doing and like you have to actually pick subjects that other people are doing. I'm actually not saying that at all. I'm just saying try things that maybe you just are a little a little scared to try, but you kind of want to try because you may actually end up liking the things a lot more than you expect. So tip number two are what are your goals and intentions? So once you've tried a lot of different things, you've gotten your feet wet in a lot of different mediums and subjects to draw and paint, I highly suggest that you start to think about your goals and intentions for your life. Now, I know this sounds like really deep and stuff, but honestly, it's more about what you want for your life. It's more about just, I don't know, like what you see yourself uh, doing in like five or 10 years and does that make you happy? You know, looking at that kind of fantasy future in your mind, like what would make your life great? Do you want to be able to be a full-time artist and paint at home and maybe have an assistant help you with the not so fun stuff like shipping and emails? Or do you actually see yourself kind of doing all of it and you really enjoy maybe editing videos and you really enjoy doing all these different things because it keeps the monotony at bay? Um, just kind of think about what kind of artist you want to be. Or maybe you want to stay in a part-time job doing something totally different than art and you want art to be kind of your side hustle or you want art to be kind of more, take up more of your time but also have like a little side job at like a retail place or something just for an example. But kind of look at what your long-term goals are. And these could even be really lofty. Like you could even have fantasies about having like a mansion and a nice car and or maybe like you live on a farm in the middle of nowhere, like just kind of start with these long-term insights and see like what kind of tickles your fancy there. Now along the same line, I'm also talking intentions. So what kind of intentions do you have? Do you actually want to use your art to speak to people in a way that maybe they haven't been spoken to before? Do you want your art to mean something very specific or do you want your art to be more aesthetically pleasing than have some kind of deeper meaning? Or it could be both. Now they're not mutually exclusive at all. So kind of think of your goals and intentions as something that kind of feed off of each other. So you kind of want, you know, your goals. Um, first of all, you don't just want to have long-term goals. You definitely need to set short-term goals as well. So a short-term goal might be you want to do a 12-hour art challenge or you want to get um, a certain amount of subscribers on your YouTube channel or I don't know, like 
be realistic with your short-term goals though because it's really easy to kind of mix and muddy your long-term and short-term short-term goals together and that can really mess you up and trip you up so but number three is to practice a lot and I mean a lot um, it's really easy to get into the habit of just painting and then leaving the studio and then that's it. Um, I think it's really important that you practice as much as you can. So of course you need a break and you need to rest. But let's say that you're still kind of inspired when you leave your studio and you don't necessarily want to stop. Like, you could take your sketchbook out of your studio, into the living room, watch some TV with your hubby, <laughs> if you're married, um, or whatever, and eat your dinner while sketching your sketchbook and watching TV with him. You know, you can multitask. Of course, again, you need a break. Everybody needs a break at some point, so don't take this too far. But in general, I think that practice is super, super important to help with your self-confidence. And the reason I say this is, as you practice, and it, when you practice in the right way, meaning you're practicing things maybe you're a little bit uncomfortable with, but you still want to learn how to do, or you're practicing the things that you really, really love to draw and paint, just in general, um, no matter how messy it gets in that sketchbook, I think it really, really helps your confidence because you will notice improvement if you are actually putting in the time and practice and you're using your eyes and you're really focusing. So number four, my next tip would be to have several other artists you look up to. Now this one can be a little dangerous in a way because sometimes it can actually hurt our confidence, but I think that if you have a, you know, a fairly medium to large amount of artists that you look up to instead of just looking up to one or two, I think it helps you gain a much broader perspective uh, and scope on art careers in general because it will help you see that everyone's path is different and that is a super important key factor in going forward is realizing that your path is not necessarily an exact copy of another artist's path. So I think it's super important to have a diverse group of artists that you look up to and that also helps your style not necessarily kind of look like any one of the art one of those artists in particular and instead it helps your style develop on its own as kind of a mix of all your favorite things tip number five is to take a break from social media when needed now, so this one is a little bit of the opposite of number four like i mentioned sometimes it can be dangerous to follow a ton of super amazing artists because it can really kind of make you feel, sometimes it can make you feel like crap because it can make you feel like, oh, you know, they're doing so much better. How am I going to reach that goal? How am I going to do as good as they are? And this kind of thinking is toxic, but it's super easy to do if you're following like a ton of amazing badass artists then it can be very easy to fall into this problem. So I highly suggest you every now and then when you have a moment to step back, take a break from social media, whether it's taking a break from Twitter or taking a break from Instagram, just take a little bit of a break so you're not constantly bombarded by amazing artists and their amazing lives um, just for a minute. So you can kind of focus more on your own journey because that's another problem is sometimes we vicariously live through these other people and what it does is it is it at the same time it's making us feel kind of crappy because we're not there yet. It can kind of have a double-edged sword to it. So on the one hand you're constantly like oh wow they can do it so why can't I do it? So it's sort of this idea of you're seeing all this success so you know that it's possible but at the same time you're only seeing success. You know what I mean? You're not seeing the failures that come with the successes because I'm pretty sure almost every artist has some kind of failure that they've had in their life. I don't think, I think it's rare for an artist to just constantly be accepted into all these galleries and to never have a rejection letter and to never have a moment where they're depressed about something. It's very natural for us to just see these posts that are always the positive side of things for the most part and just assume the best and that there's never a bump in the road but that's far from the truth. There are bumps in the road for every artist and maybe they're bigger and smaller for certain artists than others but again it's not always what social media shows. And tip number six would be to be a mentor to a younger 
or maybe a less skilled artist. Now, this may sound kind of harsh, the way I worded that, a less skilled artist, but when you think of it like this, no matter who you are, there's an artist out there who has more skill than you. And so all of us are at different levels and at different parts of the journey. So it's not really harsh at all, but I really think this is a great tip because it can boost your confidence because it kind of opens your mind to realizing that, yes, there are these amazing artists that you look up to and it feels like you can't attain those goals quick enough, right? But at the same time, this being a mentor in whatever capacity that is, whether it's just answering some DMs on Instagram or whether it's just showing up and helping people on your YouTube channel and like kind of giving advice on things they could do differently with their art career or, or just their art in general and, and the techniques that you use in your art. No matter what that capacity is, I think it automatically, like, at least gives you a little bit more self-confidence because you feel like you've gotten somewhere, you know, you've, you've improved as an artist, you've improved as a leader, and, and it really helps. It just, it really helps because you're helping someone else and it's automatically going to make you feel more confident about yourself. Um, it's just a great way to look at it because you know, you're, you're extending this hand to this other artist and it's something that you would have loved to have when you were in their shoes and vice versa. I mean, when you look up to an artist that you look up to all the time, wouldn't you love it if they reached out to you and, and said some kind words or gave you some tips? Of course you would. So why wouldn't you do that to someone else, right? Like it's really helpful and I think it's a really great confidence booster. But my last tip, tip number seven, is to look to the future of your art. Don't constantly wallow in self-pity and negativity because this is really toxic. And while it might not completely set you up for failure, I think it's a huge part of why people quit making art. And if you quit making art altogether and you don't try to put yourself out there and you don't try to contact galleries or or um, contact people for commissions, or you don't try to, I don't know, in any way, like if you just hold up and you just like leave the world behind and you don't make art, how do you expect your art to sell or be shown anywhere? You, you It's kind of hard to be a, a hermit artist and still get known unless you have someone else doing all the legwork for you and getting your art shown and that's really hard to do and typically costs a lot of money so I highly suggest you look to the future of your art and instead of being negative and kind of a hermit and wallowing I think you should be positive and you should put yourself out there as much as you can of course don't spread yourself too thin this is something that I've done many times and I've kind of recently started to think about taking a step back um, on a few things and maybe reevaluating, for instance, this YouTube channel. And that's another reason why this video is actually different than my normal video I would have out on this day. In fact, um, depending on when this is uploaded, this video is actually late, whether it's a few hours late or a few days late. I'm not actually sure at this point, but. I wanted to put together a new and different type of video and I really wanted to give you guys value and I hope that I accomplished that today. And don't worry, um, if you guys ever have a question about the Medibang tutorial series, I would totally love to answer those questions so leave those comments down below. But I am going to put a pause on that series and I'm also going to put a pause on the art prompt series because these two series do the least well on my channel and it's telling me, you know, maybe I should rethink the content. So I'm going to put a pause on those for now and I hope that's okay with you guys, but I want to put out more videos like this because I think that videos like this are super inspiring and helpful and at least I think so when I watch videos like this across YouTube. I really like watching art being made but I also on top of that like some kind of story time tips or lessons. So if you guys really like this kind of content and want to see more of this kind of thing from me please hit the like button so I'll know and if you're new here don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more fun stuff like this and more art related content. 
If you guys at all want a product or an art print of this piece, I actually have it available on my Society6 shop and I will link that down below so you guys can purchase this artwork if you would like. And I hope you guys have a great day. Um, don't forget I have a Patreon page where you can actually get rewards such as digital paper dolls, a postcard sent to your house, or just in general posts that get posted there earlier than anywhere else or just exclusive to Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye. So before I go, I just want to shout out my patrons. They're on the screen right now. And I just want to thank them so much for supporting me. They're always so super kind and sweet and they help me out a lot. Thank you guys so much for being patrons.